60 gigabytes. That's how much is on this install media that we're making today. And you're probably thinking, why 60 gigabytes? And it is simply, we put every single driver in existence on this thumb drive, pretty close to at least, to where it just always works. You go ahead, when you install Windows, you get right on the desktop and all your drivers are already installed. It's not going through Windows Update to install things. It just works. But further than that, we're going to be doing an auto-attended XML, which is just a fancy way of saying we don't have to answer any questions. It just installs and goes right out of the gate. So that's what we're doing in this video. Let's make our official Windows 10 install work how it really should work although it will be a bit bigger and a big thumb drive is required i'd recommend probably a 32 gig to 64 gig for this one because i'm going to show you how to you don't necessarily need to install every driver we'll do an actual extraction of all our drivers on this system and that way this system or any system i have i can just extract all the drivers and then just pile them into one installation media, and that installation media will be good for any of my systems. So let's stop talking, get on the desktop, and start actually working on this. All right, to start out with, I have a little cheat sheet on ChrisTitus.com. Link is in the description. And right here, we just come right in. We first need to download the official ISO. I just go directly to Microsoft, download this ISO. So once we have that downloaded, I like to get the MSMG toolkit next. Uh, go ahead and download it directly from their website. I'll leave a link, obviously, on the website itself. All, all this stuff will be linked right here, so you can just go to it and download from the official source. If you need further explanation of anything in this toolkit that I didn't don't go over today in this video, uh, check out this one. I did this about a year ago, and I go into actually removing and bloating and make a real minimal ISO with the toolkit, which today we're actually bloating it up and adding all the drivers and everything to it. So let's get into that portion. We'll start with PowerShell right here. We're just gonna copy this and come into PowerShell with admin. We'll just right click. It extracts all our drivers. And uh, right now there's no drivers directory. So we'll need to create that in download. So let's make our directory and call it drivers. And we're just gonna rerun that command. It goes in the system, says, okay, what drivers are on here? Let's export all of them and put them into one folder for us. So let's go ahead and let this go forth and export everything. Now I will say this much, if you do have any questions, I am live streaming over on Twitch again. So drop into chat, say hello. Sometimes I'll be playing a game. I usually about once a week do just kind of my own little tech how-to over there. Click this to close it, go into drivers, and you'll see all the different drivers that were exported in here. I'm gonna just go ahead, grab all of them, and paste them into our toolkit. From our toolkit over here, I have extracted basically the download. We'll go into drivers, install, Windows 10, X64. All right, so that's every driver we have in this system. Obviously, if you have more systems with different components, I would just go ahead and go to those systems, copy and paste all these. As you noticed, all these drivers are really, really small, which is nice because that means I can easily copy and paste them everywhere. You can't put executable or setup files in here. They only work off of INF and DLL, so uh, you, you've been warned not to do that that will not work you need to extract the actual physical drivers and that's how why we do it through powershell like this next up we need to do updates now when i did my windows amt video or ame video where we stripped out all the components of windows including update i showed you how to download these things just come into the official source, Microsoft Update. Again, don't use third-party sites to install updates. That's always a bad idea. But we would like to grab the official 
download. So I put the links and you'll notice I already put the search terms in there. The thing you need to know when you're downloading, match up your version number, which I'm using 20H2. And then as far as this, there's ARM x86 and x64 of each one. Again, chances are you got x64. 99% of the people watching this video, it's going to be x64, unless you're on a really old PC. But at these days, I don't even know why they even bother with 32-bit installs which is what x86 is. So we'll come back into our website. We've downloaded these, both the servicing stack and the Cumulative update from our catalog. I'm doing 20H2, 64-bit, so we'll grab that one. And 20H2, 64-bit for Cumulative. Match those up. Coming back into our downloads, I'm gonna grab both those update files, the Cumulative and servicing stack, come into Toolkit, go into updates, win 10, x64, and then paste. This will grab our updates. So all the toolkits kind of set up. Now we can run the toolkit and install these on our image. ISOs are very easy to mount. You can just right click and mount with your PC. We have the mounted one right here. You would just take all this, copy it over into downloads, toolkit, DVD, paste it into here. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and eject this mount. And we're gonna launch our toolkit right here. So we'll go ahead and hit start. Okay, so the very first thing is we select the source, select the source from DVD. We'll hit one for this one. And we're gonna go ahead and mount all the boot recovery and regular Windows image. All right, with that done, now we can go ahead and integrate these things. We're gonna integrate our drivers first off. We'll go ahead and integrate it into the installation image. The reason why we put it in the installation media instead of like the setup or boot is typically those never really run into any driver related issues these days. Back about five, 10 years ago, we ran into a lot of SATA based drivers and those types of things. But these days, typically, always the installation media is what we're integrating with. Uh, obviously, we can get every single driver. As the title of this video or the thumbnail said 60 gigs, we could go kind of bonkers here. I use a tool on my network drive, if we come into here, called Snappy Driver Tool. And under the driver indexes, you can go ahead and extract every single one of these and you can see right now, let's go ahead and just show you the total size. This one's only 20 gigs compressed. Once you extract all these, it ends up being about 60 gigs. I'm not gonna do it for this particular image, but I wanted to kind of leave this as an option. Let's say you're a repair shop or you're touching tons of different PCs and you just want one USB to rule them all. Well, this can do it. You'd extract each one of these, let's say, you wanted every single biometric driver in existence, you'd open this up and you'd have to go through each one of these folders and go into the AMD 64, grab all each one of these files. It'd be a bit of a pain in the butt, I will say, and it will take some time to go ahead and go through each one of these, but entirely doable. It's just, do you really wanna to go to all that trouble? That's up to you. I, I leave it in your hands. But I want to at least give it there. This right here is Snappy Driver Tool. Uh, I'll put a link in the website how-to guide as well. Uh, right here, sditool.org. On the download, download the full version right here. It's a torrent download, and it includes all the drivers. The light download doesn't include any drivers. That's why I usually just grab this one. And then I just update it about once a month just so no matter what I have on my network, I can just install. So with the driver integration done, now we need to do Windows Update and we'll go ahead and hit yes to continue. And we're gonna integrate Windows Update. It'll look for our packages and it should find those, those files, which you can see the roll up fix right here that it's integrating. This keeps you from when you first install Windows to have to download a whole gig of information from the internet. Even though that ISO 
is relatively new in October of 2020, there's still about a gig of updates since then. And this just simply gets that cumulative update for us. I will go into features, however, and I'm gonna install .NET 3.5 and also add probably the Edge Chromium browser as it comes with the old Edge uh, by default. Even though I don't necessarily use that browser, I would rather have the Chromium-based browser out of the gate. And the Win32 calculator as well. I like the old school one that's not reliant on the Microsoft Store. The rest of this, I usually don't do except for if I'm doing any gaming, I'll obviously grab the media feature pack a good dependency that's reliant on some games. Specifically, I know Red Dead Redemption 2 requires the media feature pack. So you wanna install that and 3.5 is used for pretty much every game uh, made in the past 10 years. A lot of the launchers, a lot of things rely on it. So it's always good to be at least doing number A uh, or in getting 3.5. Okay, now that we have all our drivers, features, and updates all integrated in, we are simply gonna write this out. Uh, obviously, you could remove and customize this further, but I've already done that in a separate video, which I linked in the article. So check that out if that interests you at all. So we're just gonna apply this out, and we'll just go ahead and apply and save changes to source images and say yes. All right, with everything applied, we can go into the target here. We'll just go six for target. And now we're just gonna make an ISO image number one. We're gonna name this one Win 10 20 H2 with drivers. This will go ahead and make our ISO file, drop it into the ISO file. And then from there, we still have a couple things to do to kind of wrap this up. We are officially done with MSMG toolkit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit exit and let it clean up. Whenever you exit toolkit, it always does this cleanup process. It's always good to just let that do its thing. Now we still have that auto attendant right here that we need to make. Uh, I went and made this little cheat sheet on a website. You can open this up, Windows answer file generator, fill in all your stuff. The default ones are great. You skip the EULA, out of box experience. So it just gets you right on the desktop. At the end here, typically I just fill in a name, let's say Titus for the username. I typically never put a password and just know that by default, it skips like customer experience input. <laughs> and then also UAC is disabled, which is great for installing extra programs on once you install. However, if you want this to be a set it and forget it type solution, I would come down here and enable UAC if you're putting this on an end user's computer. With that said, come down here, download your file, and you'll have the auto attend. Now we need to edit the ISO file that we've made. And the easiest way to do this is I actually just grabbed this free software called AnyBurn. Uh, you can use whatever you have. I think I remember using Power ISO a couple years ago, and there's a lot of different ways. I, if you're real familiar with 7-Zip, you could extract it all, add the file, and then package it back up in an ISO using like ImageBurn. However, AnyBurn I like just because it just kind of saves me a couple steps. So I'll go ahead, pull up any burn, edit an image, select my image file, which is right here under toolkit, 20H2, what we just made. We'll hit next. And I'm just gonna change this like Blu-ray disc, just so we have enough space. And we're gonna go into the downloads folder where the auto attendant XML is. We add it to that file, hit next. Let's go ahead and save that file out. Probably want to change the file name. Yeah, let's, let's try to override it. Let's see what happens. All right, the image file's coming to an end here, and we'll go ahead and exit. And that's it for how easy that is to edit the ISO image. I remember back in the day, it was just so much more difficult. But we'll come back into our toolkit where we directly edited the ISO. I do like to go ahead, just mount this, just to see that all our files made it on here. So let's go over to here where we mounted it, and there's our auto attend. And our image is made, we could easily do anything we want with this. We could put it on Ventoy, boot directly, or just boot in image a direct USB drive and, and image that if we like uh, using Rufus. So 
choose wisely however you want to install Windows. I've done it a variety of different ways on the channel. Check out my other videos, or if you'd like to ask me a question directly, check out my Twitch. Uh, I'm back to streaming a couple days a week down there, just mainly for fun. Don't feel the need to subscribe or anything like that. I just uh, like to kind of hang out. Uh, it gets kind of lonely these days. And uh, yeah, other than that, I am dedicating a little more time to what I'm doing here as I've gone to one day a week doing uh, what I usually do in my day job, which is exactly what I teach on this channel. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next one.